Uh, Mark Holmes, how's it going with you in the land of uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia, the Loire? You it's, know, it's really great. Uh, this is probably one of my favourite places to come because I like the seaside. Right. So, um, whether it's Pacific Ocean or Atlantic Ocean, I really like an ocean. Yeah, you like the ocean, and yeah. you uh, in your history, you know, you've came to Nova Scotia quite a bit. You know, you supported, yeah. you know, to uh, support fans, you know, that love you. Yeah, which would be. Uh, it's uh, uh, something about the East Coast where I think because sometimes the weather might be a little bit dodgy here and there, even in the summertime. Sometimes it can get freezing. Right. And um, I think people just have a warm heart as a result, and uh, we've been very fortunate to do well here. Mark, something I want to talk about, you know, your new representation, you know, Platinum Blonde with the new singles, you know, coming out. Yeah. Incredible work. Your uh, pitch, your vocals, what you've been doing to keep it up, you know, is just like 1985, you know. Again. Yeah, um, I've, I think that's a genetic thing. I've been very fortunate to have a voice made of, of, uh, of, of I don't know, some kind of metal. Okay. Uh, the, same, the same metal that's in uh, Wolverine. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'm not quite sure, but yeah, it, it can take a hammer in and still keep on, on going, which is yeah. kind of good. When did you discover that voice? Well, you know, or was that voice always there? I, no, because I was, I was when I first started as a musician, I was mainly a guitar, guitar player. Of course, yeah. And uh, and my vocals weren't too clever, and I asked my girlfriend at the time. Uh, I was thinking if you know, since they were always sacking the singers, maybe I'll just play guitar and sing. And then she she turns to me and says, "Mark, you know you're a very good guitar player." And just left it at that. So um, I, I didn't listen. I, I generally don't listen for some time, right. so I should have. But uh, what had happened was is because I wasn't so clever at singing, but my voice just simply sounded like no one else. And then that's what really. Hit because when a band has a signature sound, right. like we have, um, it it takes you it takes you far further than if you just had a you know you sound like everybody else, which mm -hmm. is is a lot of the problems with with bands with great songs and fantastic songs, but just don't really sound unique. Like um, for instance, say uh, uh, U2, you always know when a song, uh, if somebody sounds like U2, you're just going to say, well, that sounds like U2, or right. the Stones, or the Beatles. You know what I mean? To, to have somebody say, well, that sounds like Platinum Blonde, that's a really cool uh, thing for us. And, and a lot of bands do cite us as, as influences, which is kind of nice as well. I mean, there's only one Mark Holmes, you know, for voice. Well, there's an awful lot on the web. <laughs> <laughs> there's an awful lot of me's out there. Yeah. But uh, that's okay. With the name, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And a uh, common name, in a sense. Yeah, more common than I thought. I've never met another Mark Holmes. I've met Mike Holmes, okay. the renovating uh, specialist. But um, that's all. Any relations to uh, Sherlock Holmes? Oh, well, being that we're both mythical creatures, yes. Okay. Now, Mark Holmes. Mm. The video beautiful. Yes. Great work. Thank I you. love the platinum color in it because I mean we yeah. we, we do see that. Okay. In, the, in the video, and uh, I think we see that. Yeah, I mean, well, that's, I that's the way yeah. I've seen it. Yeah, the director, yeah. I think it was all the directors doing, Jesse yeah. Mann, yeah. A very good representation of the band, and your body, you're more in shape, it seems, than you've ever been. It's true. Um, I work out maybe about five to six times a week, about two hours a day, uh, to stay in shape for touring okay. and, and stay in shape for living. and, and you know, feeling and looking good. Right. Um, I think in the 60s and 70s when people were just partying and doing the whole rock star thing, they figured just, oh, like I'll, I'll have a menthol cigarette, that's a bit healthier. Mm -hmm. And, um, but nowadays, I mean, you have to kind of eat well and, 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 and you basically you just won't age. If you, if you work out, you eat properly and party sparingly, then you, you kind of, stay the same age. Right. Yeah. Well, you're doing good at it because in yeah. this video, um, I can't believe it, you know, it's... Well, that's great. Yeah. And no trick photography either, thank goodness. So it's not photoshopped? No, photos, you can't you can photoshop a photograph, but not really. Not a video, of course. Yeah. And the, uh, um, a lot of the CG money was spent on the, uh, the big labyrinth and so on and okay. so forth. Now, Valentine, the video that... Was that fun? That's quite interesting. Now, we go from 
the beautiful to, to, to the, not to so the, to the macabre. Right. Yes. Um, I all our videos of have kind of been serious, you know, it's not, it's not a lot of tongue in cheek going in our videos. Uh, so I thought it would be a good idea to have the band literally be monsters as well. Right. You know, um, I actually came up with the concept, uh, and Michael Penny is director, and he did uh, a great job of making it look like we wanted it to look like a B horror film. Right. Uh, and with the camera work and the, and the quality of the lenses and everything these days, it's hard to get that B look. Right. But he managed to get it, and then um, I think in the Vancouver Sun did a bit of a critique on the video, and they said, "Well, it kind of looks like a bit of a B movie," and but that was what we wanted, okay. so that was kind of cool. Yeah, and where do you go out to pick out the people in the videos? Is this like personal people you know, or is it actual actors and stuff? No, those were actors. The director he used to do that. Okay. that doesn't really have much to do with the band. Okay. Now. You guys have been famous with videos and stuff like that. Does your video still get played, you know, on some sort of network? Because now it's on YouTube. That's the only thing people get to access videos. You know, what do you think of that? I think first people one? like to watch videos when they feel like it. If they like a song, they'll just go check out the video. Um, you know, it's played. So we, we played on a lot of news stations and te television shows and stuff like that. When, when we come on to do interviews or or much music and stuff. I mean. You know the the quality's there, so we, we you know we get played, um, and you know the, the the music's done well. I mean, we knew we had a great record. We just didn't know if anybody was going to care. Mm -hmm. So we were pleasantly surprised to find that people did. You know, what about waiting for um, you know Facebook and social media? You know, for nowadays, you know, to promote in that way because it seems it's the only way to promote now. Yeah, they have taken over the world. Google world. Yeah. Um, well, people go online. I mean, what can you do? Do you do you get cross to the salmon for swimming upstream because it's a ridiculous thing to do? Why do you just stay where they are and have babies? For some reason, they swim upstream, and you know, time is going to take the Earth in the direction it so chooses. Uh, you can either move with it or step off and watch it go. And the um, problem is, is too many people die at the age of 30 and not buried until they're 90. Mm. You know, you really should st stick with it. And life's exciting as, as, as long as you're part of it. But when you're not part of it, there's no, especially for an artist, mm -hmm. it has to be part of, uh, of the wheels and turns. Mark, how, how, how do you structure a song, you know, when you go into, you know, creating something? Where do you start? I always start with, an interesting guitar riff, keyboard riff, okay. and then I start underlying some bass riffs with it. Then I will move to the vocal melody, the try vocal melodies, and the very last is the words. Hmm. The very last is words always. Do you find that the words are very important in your song? I labor over the words. The, the okay. songs, the melodies come quite easily. I, I labor over the words because I really know we have a signature and I don't want to I don't want to um, veer from that signature of the type the style of writing and the, and the subject matter. We'd like to be just a tiny bit deeper with our writing and not be as and you not be as blatantly obvious as to what the song may be about, but so other people can interpret it for their life. Can I ask a question, you know, back in I guess it was the nineties, you guys Drifted with a name, The Blondes. And well, that was, that was that? nothing to do with us. That was just stupidity on, on the management part. Okay. It's, they're not even involved with us anymore. So they just changed one of the changes? Well, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't okay. nothing. We, we quit by then. We said we're not doing this. Okay. And even though we did, they put it out anyway. And that album was just a bunch of demos. Okay. It was not even a real album. Okay. So that at least we get that sorted out right Yeah, now. it's good we did, yeah. Um, I've seen you. In the year 2000, you had a, in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia, you had a bass, yeah. like um, acoustic bass. Yeah, that was well, fun, that was a good one. Um, interesting to see, you know, Mark Holmes play platinum blonde music on an acoustic bass. Yeah, it, was, it had a really wacky, big, fat sound. I really liked it. Um, this tour we're doing in two, the show's in two stages. Uh, for Standing in the Dark, we're doing it as a three-piece, and for the rest of the music, we're doing it as a four-piece. 
So um, you can basically take people uh, through the journey that we had, starting out and then moving up to now. Now with this uh, Standing in the Dark um, 30 year anniversary tour and stuff, will you have like a DVD, like live concert from back in the day? Oh, okay. or what you guys doing there? Uh, when, we, when, we, when we actually do the tour, like the, the, the big shows, we're going to have all sorts of video stuff. Yeah. Lot, lots of, we've, we've worked out quite a bit. You must be very proud of your career, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you know... I think we could, I could have done more. I really, I, I always have regret. Uh, there's so many things we could have done. We did it. And, and I just try to do as many of them now as I can. Like in my era, you guys were in, you know, Hostess Chips and stuff like that, you know, remember? There's Bon Jovi, there's Platinum Blonde, little stickers. Yeah. We seen that and we're like, wow, let's let's see what Platinum Blonde is, and this is the reason you know I know who you are. Okay. You know, do, do you think that helped in a sense? You know, the the little kids that you know six years old back then, you know, to uh, say, look at these yeah, guys. Yeah, I, I, I bags of crisps. Yeah, yeah. interested, but um, you know, I, I think it was more the marketing campaign of the of the of the bag of the crisp company than mm -hmm. than anything. Um, but you know, it was interesting to do. Uh, and yeah, well, that's it. That's it's interesting. I've not really heard anyone talk about that. I mean, the first set, they've they've got them with them today. They they the little yeah. tags or whatever they were, buttons. But uh, nobody really asks about it. But you did, so that's cool. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was yeah. Any time you can reach people, I mean, kind of want to reach people so they can make up their mind whether or not they like it. How many gigs do you play a year nowadays? This tour will be about sixty. Okay. So you keep him busy like that? Uh, yeah, and I also have my DJ career, which will, I'll be touring that as well, and finishing the record for that. And uh, doing remixes, which I'm a little bit behind in some of them as we speak. Is there so places you still want to go, you know, you never went to? I want to go everywhere. Everywhere? Everywhere. As, as many, I mean, funniest thing about our career now, we're internationally, we're bigger than we ever were. Played a really lot of rounds, and it's been... Uh, it's it's like we got older, but the crowd stayed the same, and it's kind of nice. Mm. You find now with the internet, you are going to bring some new people in, like it's this discovery. Already, yeah, it's already happening in a big way. You know, when Robert Smith did the cover with Crystal Castles of Not in Love, it it really uh, punched a hole in the sky as and, uh, as far as the internet went, and uh, it just opened up kind of blonde to the universe mm -hmm. and uh, wow that meant it was just it was, I'm so fortunate to, to have Robert Smith an idol of mine when I was young singing song uh, words that I wrote wow it was crazy it was mm -hmm. amazing I did the remix and Ooh. so I had everything soloed on my, on my studio at home and, and uh, it just kicked in my god that's Robert Smith's voice Nothing on it, just Robert Smith's voice. Uh, it's fantastic. In the Mark Holmes archives, what will we see someday in the future? Is there some unreleased gems that you've perhaps forgotten about? Well, I there's a Mark Holmes record out. Um, but from that time, you saw me playing with the bass and mm -hmm. stuff. It's called I Just Sing Comfortably. And um, there's a number nine record that I played on with some other guys. It was kind of cool, you know, some really cool indie stuff that we did. Um, yeah, some really interesting uh, music we put together. And some, they're hard CDs to find. Right. But you may find, uh, I think you can find Ice and Comfortably on, on iTunes. Yeah. Where do you find a new CD? Platinum Blonde. Uh, most record stores and even Walmart. Find it everywhere. Walmart. I mean, it's, it's gone commercial again, so it's kind of funny. And of course, iTunes, Amazon.com. Right. Well, I think it's a good product, you know, okay. from those singles I've heard, and um, I ain't got nothing bad to say, and only positive things, Mark. Um, you keep up the great work in your career. I've always followed your career, and I'm really glad you went on Facebook, you know, and you know, um, the Platinum Blonde website. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's good. You, yeah. you need that exposure. You deserve it. Oh, deserve it? Thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know what else to say. Just your legend. Thank you. And uh, keep on being a legend. Merci beaucoup. Bienvenue, mon ami. <laughs>